Hey, guess what? It's time for making kayfabe with your hosts, Bryce and Dylan. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Making Kayfabe. It is the show where two writers, Bryce and Dylan, we put on our detective hats and we go searching for some wrestling related mysteries that we can change and adapt and make it a little bit better because there's an awful lot of mystifying things that happen in pro wrestling these days. Today's episode is going to be about the biggest mystery of all, why Brian Kendrick wasn't a main eventer. My goodness. But before we get too far into that rabbit hole, and we will get there eventually, I'm going to say hello to my, my co-host for the, today's episode, Bryce. Hello, Bryce. Hello. That, that is the biggest mystery of all, isn't it? Why wasn't Brian Kendrick a main eventer? That has got to be the biggest mystery. In all of pro wrestling, there is, there is no mystery bigger than what the heck happened to Brian Kendrick? It's, he was uh, WWE it's champion. Technically, he was the interim champion. He was WWE champion. Uh, well. Jim Ross, Jim Ross said, JR said, Brian Kendrick is the current WWE champion. What does and, that mean? And Jim Ross has never been incorrect when he's called somebody a WWE champion. <laughs> no, he's never been incorrect when he's calling <laughs> WWE Dynamite, no. <laughs> Good old JR, never incorrect. Always on the point, you know, so everything Always. he says... I believe him. <laughs> Whenever he's watching an Edgy Christian versus a Hardy Boys match, whatever guy he says is Edge, I I trust him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that guy's Edge, I guess. I, I, I do feel bad. I like GR. I do like GR. Uh, I love just, JR. Just saying I'm that just in saying. jest. Total jest. Yeah, we're just we're just playing. We're just being silly. Don't worry. But don't start sending angry letters about how much we hate JR because we don't hate JR. We don't hate JR. We don't. I I don't know where these rumors are coming from. Look, number one, we don't hate JR. Hmm. Right. Number two. We don't hate JR. No, we don't hate JR. And uh, number three, yes, we are incredibly handsome. Yes, thank right. you. We, thank you for that. That one, yeah. that one, that one is correct. But the other, the two JR ones, they're not yeah. correct. Incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. Yeah. You could say. Um, so, Bryce, how are you doing today? You excited about uh, about a bit of Brian Kendrick? I'm excited about a bit of Brian Kendrick. This has been one that you've been planning for a while, so I'm excited to see what you do. It's funny I say planning because he's a man with a plan. Yeah. First of all, Brian Kendrick, some of the best theme music. I love that song to death. I listen to that song all the time. Mm. Man with a Plan. It's, it's also, banging, uh, man. Also a great song by Corpacani called Man with a Plan. Was that the one in the video you put up? Yeah, the folk, folk metal one, yeah. Yeah, because I was like, oh, I love Brian Kendrick's music. Here we go. And I press play. I'm like, eh, this is <laughs> it's not that, yeah. This <laughs> I just, I just really like the song. Because yeah. <laughs> then I was like, I had like an existential crisis. I'm like, is this what the song sounded like all the time? And I <laughs> just thought it was something completely different. Oh, my God. There, there aren't yeah. many wrestlers that come out to folk metal. No, not yet. When you think about it. Not yet. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Who could? Who could, you got to get a, a new wrestler, a new up upcoming kick-ass wrestler to start using that kind of music, and then everybody will love it, and then everybody will copy him. Eric uh, Eric Rowan, when he was um, when he was doing the Daniel Bryan thing, he was always using he was he was always wearing like um, folk metal shirts, like mm. you know, Sabaton shirts, Churisis shirts, Corplicani, you know, Olivier, these kind of bands. So like, he's probably the best contender for it, I think. Oh, so you know all these bands. Yeah, yeah, you're big folk metal. metal I do, I do like folk metal. Yeah, I do. Yeah, nice. Well, mm. you know, it's, it's good stuff. It's not really my cup of tea, but you know what? There's some good stuff in there. You can't listen to Pearl Jam all the time. Yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> incorrect on that, my friend. <laughs> you totally can. <laughs> they have a lot of songs, but uh, you know, well, well, hey, I'll I'll go back and listen to some some of that stuff uh, after the show, just like all the other people listening to the show right now. Well, I'll go back and listen to some of that uh, folk metal, but not right now. Not right now. There's, a, gonna, there's, some, there's, there's more pressing matters. We're going to do that after the show, because right now, as Bryce said, there's more pressing matters to, to converse about, and those pressing matters are all about Brian Kendrick. Hell yeah. Is the subject of today's show, correctly identified on Twitter by CJ, a good friend CJ Pamsano. How you doing, buddy? 
yeah, CJ, yeah. Smart dude. He's 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 predicted our stuff before, I think, hasn't he? Oh yeah, he has. Yeah, he's predicted a couple. He can see. That's it. He he kind of. We've been on his show before, so he knows. He gets us. Yeah. You know, he knows. guys. Yeah. If you're listening to this, by the way, a little shout out to CJ Show. You should check him out. Um, yes, the non wrestling podcast. There you go. It's worth worth a listen to. And of course, this guy knows what he's talking about because he correctly identified that the man with the plan, Brian Kendrick. Sorry, the Brian Kendrick, is going to be the subject of today's show. So thank you very much for that, CJ. That was on Twitter. You want to hear a couple of other Twitter messages and uh, Instagram messages? Oh, yeah. Let's see what the, the, the kayfabers are saying. Let's see what the kayfabe community have to say about the Brian Kendrick. Uh, Kyra and Kai on Twitter at Dork Side of the Ring. Excellent name, by the way. <laughs> uh, they said, oh, what could have been? He was my favorite when I first started watching in 2003. We remember, we remember Brian Kendrick back in the day. You remember yeah, that? Spanky. Spanky. Uh, and a lot of people, me and myself included, were like, "Why is this guy called Spanky? <laughs> why, why, why is he naked? Why? What the? F- yeah, what? What? Uh, can we get any kind of clarification on this whatsoever?" Mm. The WWE were like, "Nope, nope. See, see you later." And I'm like, "Oh, Spanky, and he's naked. That's all you need to know." Hey, man, those are my two favorite attributes about Brian Kendrick. Why do you think he's my favorite cruiser? Really? <laughs> You do remember that, right? They had like Spanky, like streak. He, had, he was like streaking week. through the arena one time. Yeah, right? like somebody paid him to do it or something. Yeah, I can't remember who, but yeah. yeah. I mean, what a classic storyline that would be. <laughs> the, the, somebody pays Brian Kendrick to run through the arena naked, and then that leads to a wrestling match somehow. I don't know. Against Naked Midian, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, naked Midian had long since retired, as you could probably tell, because mm. where else do you go with Naked Midian? Hmm. You know, the, mm. the only place is up, and he couldn't go, he couldn't go any <laughs> further up. <laughs> That's wrestling's biggest mystery. <laughs> we got a lot of mysteries. This is why we had to put our detective hats on. Mm. We got a lot of mysteries to solve, you know? All ties together. Now, here's here's a what I consider a mystery. This one, I don't know if you knew this, but this one's from Danny at Scottish Juggalo. Another classic name on Twitter. Mm. You guys are killing it with your handles. But Danny says that he found it utterly amazing that the, the in the Brian Kendrick, was added to his name as a rib on Mike Adamy. Yes. Yeah, Did you yeah, know yeah. this? I had That's no idea. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that is actually right. It's because um, Mike Adamy used to go like call, call Taz the Taz, you know, and like <laughs> he used to get all these all these names wrong. I forgot who else he had. It with, but you got like Jeff Hardy was Jeff Harvey. And, I remember uh, Jeff Harvey. Uh, it, it basically a lot of people had like that in front of their names who didn't have the in front of their names you know this thing like you know that kind of thing the triple h the, the, the triple h <laughs> the stone cold steve austin <laughs> yeah. okay oh that, but, yeah, that, I, that's, that's, that's apparently true yeah wow i thought it was really just because he was he was the brian kendrick like there was no well, other brian it, kendrick because he made it work that's it's not the brian kendrick he's the brian the kendrick brian he kendrick. is the brian kendrick so it, it, brian it made kendrick. yeah he made um uh lemons out of lemonades or lemonade out of lemons what lemons out of lemon. yeah he took the lemonade <laughs> and then he put it back into the lemons yeah he's that good <laughs> he is that good yeah. That's what they call him. They call him the maybe, Lemon Twister. Maybe know. that was his plan. Well, he had a pl- he had a plan. What could the plan have been? That's it. Make fucking lemonade into lemons. He yeah. never told anybody what his plan was. Well, that's it. Now we know. The lemonade one. I'm like, yeah. okay. You might want to come up with a backup plan, Mr. Brian Kendrick. I don't know if that's going to make you all the money in the world that you think it will. Just saying. You know, backup plan, always a good idea. Yeah. And he didn't listen. Didn't listen. He didn't call himself the man with the backup plan. No, he didn't. And that was his mistake. Hmm. He'll learn. Mm. Um, let's see who else we got here. We got a guy on Twitter. What the F, Tiara, what the F, apparently is what this guy's handle is. Very interesting. You guys are killing it. I can't come up with with funny handles like this. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, he says, The Brian Kendrick, uh, in his opinion, is one of the underrated stars in wrestling in recent memory. He could do it all super well. And that is correct. He was yeah. pretty pretty damn good, man. He, he, he could really, like... Um, he had a really good like heel persona to him, like a swagger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But he, yeah, yeah. yeah, especially with Ezekiel Jackson as his bodyguard. Um. But he did all these high flying moves that made yeah. people go, "Oh yeah, look at this guy!" You know. Um. And he I could. I forgot I had a bodyguard. You forgot about Ezekiel Jackson? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Has he done he, anything memorable? Uh, former ECW champion. 
final ECW champion, actually, technically. There you go. And I think he won the <laughs> Intercontinental Championship as well. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> uh, meh. Who, who gives a shit about the Intercontinental <laughs> Shrug. Championship? Shrug. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody good ever won the Intercontinental Championship. Nobody. Nobody. Did Brian Kendrick win it? No. Exactly. Therefore, <laughs> nobody good won it. So there you go. That's a couple of the um, messages from Twitter. We got uh, some other shout outs I want to give out. Russ and Fiction. CJ, of course, sent a couple of messages about Brian Kendrick as well. And so we just wanted to give you guys some shout outs there. Congratulations for making it onto the show. Wrath of Shaw on Instagram. Thank you for your messages. Very, we m- very much appreciate them. And uh, you got a shout out for. So next week, remember. Leave your messages, and you'll be on the show too. Congratulations! Oh, yeah. So those are a couple of uh, that's what that's what the kayfabe community thinks about Brian Kendrick. Would you like to hear about uh, some history, the real life history of the Brian Kendrick? <laughs> the Taz. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd known about this when I was writing uh, the Taz episode. Oh man, I swear it was like a WWE writer or something that confirmed it, like, just to take the piss out of Mick Adamley or something. But hey, fuck him, huh? Fuck him, fuck anyway, him. Anyway, let's just... let's let's hear about Brian Kendrick. Hooray! All right, here's a little bit of history regarding our good friend, the Brian Kendrick. Because, of course, like we said, he was around in by 2002 or 2003 as Spanky. Mm-hmm. A long time ago, which is very interesting. But we're not talking about that. We're going to talk about 2008. Specifically, mm-hmm. let's say July 18th, 2008, an episode of SmackDown. When hey, about- that's, 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 that's working out pretty well. That's almost a year. Uh, yeah, this is going out in July 20th. So there we go. There you go. Pretty. We're almost just to see this. It's perfect. Maybe we're the man with a plan. Ah, maybe. Which one of us is the man? Uh, well, it's not you. No. Oh, I guess it's you then. <laughs> see how I quickly? Don't... See how quickly I was like, "Yeah, you're right." <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, fair enough. Oh, <laughs> uh, you find out already. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, July 18th, 2008, on the episode of SmackDown, Brian Kendrick appears as the Brian Kendrick, and not only does he have a new word in front of his name he also has a sweet new jacket he's got some sweet new theme music and he's accompanied by a bodyguard ezekiel jackson hello what's up with this ezekiel jackson don't even get me started you know exactly (laughs) who's ezekiel jack one of the greatest wrestlers of all time the subject of your rebooking next week what one of the most extreme wrestlers ever yes Mm. he was an extreme championship wrestling and he was so extreme really extreme he he! I saw him do a, a 360 on a skateboard, and he wasn't wearing a, a elbow pads. I'm like, dude, you're gonna get hurt, but he didn't. <laughs> Ezekiel Jackson, of course, will play up in in the storyline a little bit later, but um, we'll, we'll we'll get to that when we when we get there. So it, it the pairing of Ezekiel Jackson, big fucking intimidating looking motherfucker, right? And Brian Kendrick, who's kind of a slight gentleman, as you were, you know, you know what I mean. The combination of those two, I think, like visually look great. You know, a little bit like the the Diesel Shawn Michaels thing, only a little bit more extreme because Brian Kendrick was smaller than than Shawn Michaels. You know what I mean? Right. Um. So you really see that that dynamic there, and you're like, oh, this is. <laughs> I thought you meant extreme because Ezekiel Jackson was like extreme. extremely bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of that till you said it. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> We see how good we are. We're just making our own in jokes, and we don't even realize it. Yeah, unbelievable. So I really liked the pairing of these two guys. I thought it was really cool. And Kendrick, of course, played it perfectly. You could tell Ezekiel Jackson was still a bit new to the business, but Kendrick was playing it perfectly. You know, so uh, he debuts in July. He was uh, Kendrick was formerly in a tag team with Paul London, and the team was split up because of the draft. So Kendrick was drafted to SmackDown, and now he comes back. As a new, as a heel with a new look and a goatee. You know when he's got a goatee, he means shit. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. He really fucking means business. Hmm. So that was in July. Uh, SummerSlam, of course, is in August. What was? What do you think Brian Kendrick was doing at SummerSlam? Fuck off. Correct. Directly after SummerSlam, the last week or two of August, they started doing qualifying matches for a scramble match. Ah. A scramble championship match that was to be held at Unforgiven in September. So I like how he debuted in, in July. They just skipped over August and thought, <laughs> we'll put him in a match 
in September. That'll be fine. So mm. Brian Kendrick qualifies for the scramble match. Oh Just boy, going... I can't wait to see what happens here. Yeah, that would be pretty pretty sweet. You know, uh, I I should just clarify that SummerSlam had seven matches on it, mm. not including the dark match. Mm. And, and one of these seven matches had the great Kali in it. Oh, wow. Great. Now, you're telling me you couldn't find a single place for Brian Kendrick on this seven match card, one of which had the great <laughs> Kali in it. I Who was he wrestling? It. Triple H. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I know, right? Like, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. You know, I mean, you know, I've got to, got to go to my way and see that match. I know. you like, with the best will in the world, Triple H. I love Triple H, but yeah. you're not... You're not pulling that man to a good match, right? Not even. And you can tell that's what he was up to. He's like, I can do it. I'm like, no, you can't. (laughs) You can't. (laughs) It's it's like even Shawn Michaels is like, no, (laughs) no, pass. You know, who do you think's the best wrestler in the world? Like Daniel Bryan would look at Kali and be like, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) And Visser would have no chance. Yeah, exactly. No, well. Viscera, Viscera would be dead. But when did Viscera die? He's two thousand fucking fourteen. I don't know. Oh, well then he would have been. A, oh, well then we could have had Viscera versus the Great Kelly. Yeah, of course, because he didn't die then because it's fucking Big Daddy V. Oh yeah, he couldn't die before yeah. the 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 most <laughs> the the most money program in his entire career. Yeah, maybe mm. it was an illusion. He was a Great Kelly all along. Just maybe saying. the Great Kelly was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> and Triple H fought him at SummerSlam. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Um. Oh. Uh, anyway. So. Oh boy. Talking about the, the great Kelly really really gets us silly. So Brian Kendrick, along with Jeff Hardy, MVP, Shelton Benjamin, and the current WWE champion, Triple H. You didn't see that one coming. They are going to be in a scramble match at Unforgiven. So in a scramble match, basically, two people start in the ring. Every five minutes, a new person comes in. Once all people are in the ring, there'll be a a, a timer, a countdown timer. And the whoever survives with the championship by the end of the, the timer leaves the, the arena as the champion. So... Until that timer counts down, pinfalls can continue, and that person is the current interim holder of the belt. And if they can hold on to the belt until the end of the time limit, then they're the winner. Simple, right? They need to do this match more. I think they do. I, 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 I don't know that. why. Yeah. They, like, well, that's the thing. I don't forgive, and they had three scramble matches on this show. Wow. Yeah. And doesn't, like, these days, they would have just called it scramble match. Hmm. They called it Unforgiven, but they would have just been like, it's Scramble, the pay-per-view. Yeah. And you're like, well, that sounds like shit. Scramble. Scramble. Yeah. But that's the, what they do. It's the, the Sunday night at Scramble. Yeah. They have a they have a pay-per-view called TLC. Yeah. One called like, Fatal Four Way. Yeah. What, right. Like, what the <laughs> fuck does this shit mean? Boy, yeah. they may as well call it Scramble, right? Hmm. Um, but I do miss that. It's it's weird that this is a gimmick match they haven't really brought back. They haven't, no. It's really that, that only only that one night. They had the the Hardcore Championship scramble at one point at WrestleMania mm. 16? 2000? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, like um, it, Bob Holly won accidentally or something, right? Yeah, t- uh, Crash Holly was supposed to win. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't. That's what Brian Kendrick should have done. Mm. Well, actually, you watched this match, right? I saw it a long time ago, but yeah, I watched it some of it recently, making clips for the episodes for the, okay. for the Twitter. Yeah, so you've seen how it went. Like, you know that you know, Brian Kendrick gets that, that fall in the middle of the match. Yeah, and, Jeff Hardy. And that means, yes, so he's like kind of the interim champion, or if you will, technically the, the, the WWE champion, if mm. you will, mm. uh, according to JR, who is never, <laughs> ever incorrect. No. But after, so after that, Brian Kendrick kind of goes on a little bit of a streak where he, he holds like the longest interim championship in that, in a scramble match, if you know what I mean, like he's the yeah. one that's, that's able to hold on to it for the longest period of time. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Until <laughs> hmm. Triple H. Oh, hmm. Until Triple H <laughs> comes out and just murders everybody and like hits Brian Kendrick with a pedigree and pins him, right? Nice. But the the time limit hasn't ended yet. So then I think somebody else comes in. Jeff Hardy comes in and like pins 
Brian Kendrick, and then Triple H pins Brian Kendrick again. The last, the the, the last part of the of the match, the storyline is Jeff Hardy gets the pin, and then Triple H has to try. It looks like Jeff Hardy's gonna win, and then and right at the very end, Triple H scores a pin and gets his belt back, mm. uh, like right on the last three seconds. So it seems like Jeff Hardy was gonna win, and then Triple H does right. That's the story they're telling in that match. Which is really disappointing for us as Brian Kendrick fans because, we, you know, why else would they give him like the longest kind of like, you know, uninterrupted kind of part in this match? Brian Kendrick, mm. right? They're doing it to to see if he can handle being a champion or, or if the crowd are into it or whatever. But then after that, for the rest of the match, like he takes a but he eats a bunch of pinfalls, including the final pinfall, I believe, by Triple H. And after this, he's never really in the main event again. And it, it makes you wonder, like, why they would entertain, like, putting him in this match and giving him that win where he, he seemed like he was going to be the champion. Like, why yeah. tease it and then go nowhere with it, you know? It's classic WWE, isn't it? It is. Like, it felt like it seemed like they had big plans for him. And, you mm. know, the audience were responding. They were booing him because he's a heel. They were like, no, yeah. fuck you. Like, this is good. This is what you want, right? So I don't know why they didn't kind of stick with it. So... Obviously, of course, they didn't capitalize on that. This is the WWE we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So after after this, Brian Kendrick's single run kind of died. That was it, right? Great, what, two or three months, one championship match? Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> the, they started taming uh, Ezekiel Jackson and Brian Kendrick together. But they never won the tag titles. So the next year, April 15, 2009... The team was split when Kendrick was drafted to Raw and Ezekiel Jackson was drafted to ECW. Now, guess what the, the WWE did with Brian Kendrick after this? Fuck all. Oh, something even stupider. I can't even remember now. What, what, what was it? Well, here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this sentence to you. And while I'm saying the sentence, you're going to figure it out, right? Because okay. it's, a, it's a very WWE thing to do. Okay. So they split up the team of Ezekiel Jackson and Brian Kendrick, who had a history and were a team. And there was a whole, you know, they, they, they had started to, to kind of do something with them. And then they split up that team. So now that Brian Kendrick is all by himself and he split up, Brian Kendrick's storyline on Raw is that he wants to find himself a tag team partner so he can win the tag titles. Oh, no, right. He already had a tag partner. That's the most <laughs> WWE thing to do, is to split him up, especially what we've been talking about recently, right, <laughs> with the women's tag team division. To have a guy with a tag team partner and to split that team up, <laughs> only to have one of those guys look for a tag team partner. I could really like, use a tag team partner, yeah. <laughs> what? Who? Who? who it makes me speechless. Why do they do this to me? <laughs> who thinks of this shit? Who did, he, who did he find? Who's a, who's a partner? He didn't get one. He didn't get one? Well, he looked about for a bunch of people, and, and I, I guess none of them are as good as Ezekiel Jackson, so he just oh God. couldn't figure it out. And then he was released in July. <laughs> oh, dear. Wow. So that was that was the Brian Kendrick. Thank, thank you very much. And here's the thing, right? We all still remember the Brian Kendrick. Yeah, it was such not, a short lived that's, that's the weird thing. It's such a short lived gimmick, but everyone yes. remembers it. It's like, not just we, you and me. It's like all those people on Twitter, CJ and all these yeah. other guys, right? We all still fondly remember the Brian Kendrick. And like, he was only really around for like those couple of months because after that, they forgot about him, right? Yeah. From his debut up to the scramble match, that's when, when he was on TV. And then after that, they, they forgot about him. <laughs> and yet, we still talk about that. Today, yeah, and we people like, are still fond of him because, like, as, as as we speak, we posted a tweet on Twitter of, of Brian Kendrick winning the WWE title, and it's going it's going crazy at the moment. Like, lots of people are liking it, so people do fondly remember Brian Kendrick, the Brian Kendrick, and with good reason. Yeah, because he was know? awesome. Yeah. Exactly, and I think that's what sticks as well. Is that like everybody, we we still remember it because we remember we want we wanted it to pay off. You know what I mean? Mm. We really wanted Brian Kendrick to. To be that guy, and we thought this was the storyline for it, you know? Mm. But obviously the WWE, they didn't agree, did they? Mm -mm. No. And which in some ways is great news for us because it means that we get to rebook it ourselves. It's a great segue. Thank you. Hey, man, I'm getting better. Or mm -hmm. worse, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> Only took four seasons. You talk to JR, he will, he, the shit he has to say, I'm fed up with this. I'll kill JR. We don't hate JR. No, that was a joke. No. <laughs> was a jo don't spread rumors <laughs> that we hit JR. We don't. 
Love JR. Uh, so yes, that's that's the history of Brian Kendrick. It's disappointing that it wasn't better. If only there was a podcast on the internet that could make the Brian Kendrick into a superstar. But I don't know. Uh, if only. Such. If only. I think we should just call it a day. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for listening, folks. Can't, can't think of anything else. See you, at face. See you next time. Hey, I got a good idea. Why don't I give it a go and try to rebook? You? Yeah. Dylan of Making Kayfabe. Yeah, Mr. Illiterate. Should I try to write a story about Brian Kendrick? The Brian go Kendrick. For it. The Brian Kendrick. The story. The, Brian, the story for the Brian Kendrick. The best wrestler. Let's read books on Brian Kendrick. In my opinion, the dumb thing about this whole thing is trying to make the Brian Kendrick look like a really effective heel on the CM brand where Triple H is the world champion. Right? <laughs> like, with the best will in the world. There is going to be no bigger heel than Triple H while he's a champion. Which, so he is know, a heel at the time. Yeah, well, it's Triple H. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's a heel most of the time. Even when he's just walking around backstage, he's a heel. Right? <laughs> Fuck that guy. Uh, yes, he, he. I mean, he does his best work as a heel. And to be fair, like obviously, he should be the the biggest heel on the on the brand because he's the champion. But we all know that it's going to be unlikely for another new heel such as Brian Kendrick to get that close while Triple H is on top, right? Yep. We're all pretty pretty sure about this. Plus, let's be honest with ourselves about what a Triple H versus Brian Kendrick match would look like. <laughs> It'd be two minutes long. Exactly. Now, as cool as it was that Brian Kendrick was almost a champion in that, you know, scramble match, if he hadn't won it, like, there and then, it would have been a bit of a mess because Triple H is, like, the top heel and, you know, how do you... Get, he's going to want the belt back. How do you get the belt off him? Um, and plus, he's so new into the run. Like, would you put the belt on him? I don't know. Yeah, you establish um, him a bit more. Yeah, it's tricky. You know, it's hard to balance that stuff out. So it's 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 interesting what they because that that's when I started thinking about that stuff like that. That's when I realized that clearly they didn't give a shit about this guy, right? No, they didn't. They just put him on TV. I'm like, they have no long term plans for him. They didn't want him to do anything because if they did, they would have seen all this stuff coming, right? They would have figured this out. He would have been at SummerSlam, you know, they would have had plans for him. They didn't. So I'm going to try and and rejig that a little bit and, and try to make it make sense. That's what we do on this show. So, so where, where are you kicking off from? Are you kicking off from the scramble match? I'm kicking off pretty much, yeah. I'm going to do some nice. little uh, rejigging before that, though. Okay. okay. So what we're going to do, because like I said, there's no SummerSlam match. That's not fair uh-huh, for a guy right. like the Brian Kendrick. The Brian Kendrick versus he's, the Great Cali. The, the Great Cali. <laughs> <laughs> Some inverted commas. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is, yeah, what? Inverted the or inverted for great? I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make that joke. I couldn't quite do it. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I had to tag you in there. <laughs> I'm good. Well, hey, that's that's the best thing about this. Is like we, we can cover our own jokes. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's we're pro- we're pros jokes. at this. Don't. They're the best. They're award-winning jokes. Award-winning? Yeah, they won the award for worst joke. Oh. <laughs> but it still counts. It's still an award. award. Yep. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Um. So, Brian Kendrick debuts in July after the, the, the brand split. Triple H is the current WWE champion. He won the belt from Randy Orton at Backlash. Mm. But then Triple H was also drafted to SmackDown, bringing the belt with him. So, both men are on SmackDown. Both men are going to take part in this scramble match at Unforgiven. The only one of these men was at SummerSlam. And it wasn't Brian Kendrick. So we're going to have to change that. So what we do is we have him come out. Brian Kendrick come out. The way he, he kind of did. He debuted and he was getting some wins over other people. You know, people lower on the card, as it were. But that doesn't really matter because the point is, first of all, you get him out there. Get people to see him. Right? Rack up some mm. wins. Totally get the vibe that he's a heel. And he used this manager to back him up and, and to heal his way through things, all right? Get this established on TV pretty quick. And then he gets into a bit of a, a backstage altercation, as it were. Oh. Well, you know, not a fight per se, but like a little war of words with one of the, the more popular superstars on the roster at the time, Jeffrey Hardy. Otherwise, <laughs> Jeff Harvey. Jeffrey Harvey, otherwise known as Jeff Hardy. Or the Jeff Hardy. The Jeff Hardy or the Jeff Hard, hard, hardly. It's hardly. Jeff, 
Jim Jim H- Hamley. <laughs> Jim Hamley. Jim Henson. Jim Henson. John Henson. John the Henson. John Henson. <laughs> The John Heidenreich. <laughs> Otherwise known as Jeff Hardy. <laughs> so, Brian Kendrick basically says he used to be kind of like Jeff. You know, he was a young up-and-comer. He does a lot of uh, fun moves in front of the crowd. You know, flips and tricks and stuff like mm-hmm. this that people really get. And, you know, then what Brian Kendrick did was he grew up. He got a sweet jacket. He got a bodyguard. And look at him now. And look where Jeff is, right? Jeff Jeff Hardy... Jeffrey Hardley has has been the WWE for so long, and and you know look at him now. He it's taken him this long to get to this point, right? He's been a tag champion forever, and he's only at this point now. But look at Brian Kendrick, all right? He was a tag champion too, and you'll think you'll find he did a better job of being tag champion than Jeff Hardy did. Wasn't Him. he ra- random kind of fact that I remember? Weren't wasn't he and Paul London like, one of the longest reigning tag team champions of all time? Yes, at the time I believe they were the longest reigning. I think it's been beaten by the New Day. Well, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, but I remember it because it was back in the time where WWE just did not give a shit at all about the tag team titles. Oh yeah, they, so they, just, they just held they, them forever. They yeah. just left them on Paul London and Brian Kendrick because they didn't give a shit. Right? Yeah. Again, yeah. they don't give a shit about Brian Kendrick. I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> I don't like this, but. Again, that's that's fodder for Kendrick to say. He can say, hey, I held a belt for almost a whole year, whereas mm-hmm. Jeff Hardy, your combined tag team championship reigns barely catch up to that. And I only did it, I only had to do it once. Mm-hmm. I'm clearly a better tag team wrestler than you are. I'm clearly a better singles wrestler than you are. Where's your bodyguard? You know what I mean? So I think you'll find, yeah, it's pretty clear who the better man here is. Who's Jeff Hardy? Some loser, I suppose. But who is the Brian Kendrick? He's the baddest man on SmackDown. He is the person to watch. Get it? So in conclusion, Jeff Hardy sucks. That's what that's that's what he says. All right. Fair enough. So now what we're gonna do is kind of have Kendrick on TV most weeks, beating up a bunch of guys like Jimmy Wang Yang and Scotty Goldman. No, oh, not Scotty Goldman. That's that was one of the real matches. I remember this. Oh really? Oh yeah, yeah. I've, oh, I've seen I've seen that one a couple of times because I love both those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, you know, and I'm sure Scotty Goldman, by the way, that's going to be a rebook in in the future. I don't oh, know when. Dude, I, I don't would know love when. to book. I would love to book Cole Cabana. It is. It's it's happening, right? That's a fact. It'll happen at some point. Ne- next Look time he's in Edinburgh for the Fringe, we'll ask him. Yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah, next year. He better be there. If he's not there, we'll, we'll find him. We'll find him. We will find him. Anyway, so now anyway. we've got Brian Kendrick, and he's getting these wins over guys like Scotty Goldman, etc. But oh, we're Scotty also, Goldman. oh, you dang right, <laughs> Scotty Goldman. And we're also going to be putting him up against like Jeff Hardy's. You know what I mean? You can see him racking up the wins, but he's also like squaring up against Jeff Hardy. That's how you do it. Get him to square up against the established dudes, right? And mm. in 2008, Jeff Hardy is super over. Mm. This was Jeff Hardy was about to win his first championship. Main event, like heavyweight championship, uh, that by the end of the year, I think. Mm. End of 2008. So you're like, Jeff Hardy's hot. This is perfect. He's the perfect face to put up against Brian Kendrick, our perfect heel. Yeah. It makes it makes sense. It makes sense to us. So we're going to set up Jeff Hardy versus Brian Kendrick at SummerSlam. It makes sense. Now, in real life, at SummerSlam, Jeff Hardy fought MVP. I guess they had mm-hmm. a few going. But obviously... My idea with Brian Kendrick is way better because it's about Brian Kendrick. So we're going to do that instead. We're going to have Jeff Hardy and Brian Kendrick at SummerSlam. We're going to have Kendrick go over, of course, because he's a new guy. But he's the guy we're trying to push. He's got the bodyguard so he can cheat. We have to establish it as a heel. But a win over Jeff Hardy is pretty big for Brian Kendrick. But let's be honest. It doesn't do like Jeff Hardy can take a loss, mm. right? Jeff Hardy can lose that match. Nobody's going to give a shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jeff Hardy lost to The Undertaker and everybody said he was great. Yeah, there you <laughs> right. Go. So like he can take a loss, uh, especially in 2008. Like I said, whenever he was getting super hot, you like you can tell he's just a fingertip away from that championship. So like a loss here and there, it's not going to hurt him. Okay, I guarantee that'd be a really good match as well. I think so. I think that'd be great. So you know, imagine that opening up SummerSlam. That'd be a great match, right? Oh yeah, that would be super cool. Super cool. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have. Brian Kendrick go over Jeff Hardy at SummerSlam. So after this, 
Kendrick is feeling great because he beat Jeff Hardy. And through some other Healy shenanigans, he qualifies for the scramble match. It's unforgiven. That's right. We're keeping it in. Oh, because yeah. why not? So, and now, of course, this time there's a reason for Kendrick to be in the match because of the feud with Jeff Hardy. Mm-hmm. You can continue that in this in this match. It, it all ties together. Sidebar, do you know who he beat to get in his scramble match? Scotty Goldman. Was it actually? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were asking. Can you imagine if Scotty this. Goldman won? Imagine how <laughs> fucking, <laughs> what I, a mindfuck that would be. The Scotty Goldman. The Scotty Goldman defeating the Triple H. The Triple H. The Triple H doesn't have uh, such a good ring to it, does it? No, it doesn't. The Scotty Goldman actually does, so. Yeah. The anybody could work. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a good nickname. Because yeah. it is the Brian Kendrick, you know. It does. It really does work. Yeah. I like so how they nobody else that. picked it up. I like how they did it as a joke, and they're like, "No, you know what? Fuck it, it's it's good. This works." Yeah. yeah, that's what they did with the the fiend as well. So like, wow, people really love this. Let's keep it going, even though yeah. this is totally bullshit. Me healing. The fiend sucks. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's quality content like that that keeps people listening to Megan Cafe, <laughs> award-winning podcast. I don't even need to tell you what awards we've won. We'd be here all day. Mm-hmm. We'd be so here. let's. Let's just keep talking about Brian Kendrick. So, yes, now we have a reason why he's in the scramble match. And we have a feud going on with Jeff Hardy. And then also now, whenever he does like win the interim championship in the match, you can actually, there's a reason for it now. You can gauge the audience and see how they react to it and how he handles it and what's going over. See if if, if they would buy him as champion, right? Yeah. It's, doesn't that shit make sense? Yes. Sure Sensible. fucking does. Sensible. Sensible. Um, but, of course, they never do that shit, you know? To see how uh, it's ridiculous how they're like, wow, this guy is super over now that the people have seen him win this championship. Better do nothing with him and then fire him a year later. That you know, <laughs> the fuck. So Triple H is the champion going into the match, and you would think that this is the kind of match would be perfect for taking the belt off Triple H again, right? Because he doesn't have to be pinned or submitted to to lose the match. Yeah. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the belt on Triple H for now. Okay, just don't worry about it. It'll all make sense later. <laughs> so, Triple H wins the scramble match. He's still a champion coming out of Unforgiven in September. So, Triple H wins. What a surprise. Didn't see that coming. But now we need a new challenger for Triple H at No Mercy 2008. Uh, how, how are we going to de- determine who the number one contender is going to be for the championship, Bryce? Another scramble match. Close. We'll have a singles match that determines uh, the number one contendership. I, uh, did it. I did it again. Sound the horn. I did it again. It is a pleasure to hear you work. Ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> the same, it's the same story then over and over again. Every, Nobody, it actually is. <laughs> nobody's noticed, but it's the same over and over again. <laughs> Copy and paste. <laughs> and that's how Stevie Richards won the Cruiserweight Championship. <laughs> well, hey, that's a good one. Do you know what? Do you know what, General is? Though? I, I, I'm baffled that you do, you do definitely include a number one contenders match in every episode. But every episode is unique, despite that. Like you still manage to build something around that. So yeah, well done. Well, of course, this number one contendership match is going to further the feud between Brian Kendrick and Jeff Hardy. Makes sense. It all makes sense. Mm. Now, what we're gonna have this time is we're gonna have Brian Kendrick in their second match. Because Brian Kendrick, of course, won their SummerSlam match. Now, Je- Jeff Hardy uh, versus Brian Kendrick is, is, is their second match. It seems like uh, Kendrick is about to win by cheating once again. But the referee figures it out and, um, you know, stops him from cheating. And that mm-hmm. allows Jeff Hardy to get the win. So now they're one each. And that means that Jeff Hardy is now the number one contender to Triple H and his world championship. So they're going to have a match at No Mercy 2008. Which is really what happened in real life. It was Triple H versus Jeff Hardy. Huh. Yeah, how about that? Hmm. So, Triple H versus Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's getting ready to go to the Mercy. And he is ready for his match. He's out in the ring, ready to go, uh, waiting for Triple H. Whenever, before the match, right before the match, they go backstage and they find Triple H has been beaten up backstage. What? <gasps> Triple H? Who could have done such a thing? So, because Triple H has been beaten up backstage... And because, you know, Jeff Hardy's super over. Somehow, Jeff Hardy manages to win the World Heavyweight Championship from Triple H. Ooh. Ooh, hello. Pretty big, you would think. But then again, you know, Jeff Hardy's been around a long time. He's actually beaten Triple H before. 
and that that rub of Jeff Hardy beating Triple H for that championship is pretty big. It's a feel good moment. Everybody loves it because everybody loves Jeff Hardy, right? So it seems to make sense for Jeff Hardy to win it off Triple H. Okay, so Jeff Hardy wins the belt in October at No Mercy. Now here's the fun part because obviously the audience are jazzed that Jeff Hardy is the champion, right? So you can probably see where we're going to go with this. As a creative booker, you know exactly <laughs> where we're going to go with this. But now that the audience are super happy that Jeff Hardy is the champion, at any time you want any, I would do it on a random summer, or I would do it on a random episode of SmackDown. We will have Jeff Hardy coming out and talking about how great he is as the champion, how grateful he is to finally win the belt. And who is he interrupted by? The Brian motherfucking Kendrick. Kendrick is very annoyed at Hardy for being the new champion whenever he should have been the one in that match. It's not fair. But Hardy taunts at him saying, hey, remember all that shit Brian Kendrick was talking about Jeff Hardy a couple of months ago? You know, he sucks now. It doesn't look like it's Jeff Hardy because he's got the belt. So Brian Kendrick is very frustrated about this. And he demands a match against Matt Hardy. He demands a match against Jeff Hardy right now. And you know what? Jeff Hardy accepts because he's that kind of guy, right? Jeff Hardy mm-hmm. would totally accept. Jeff Hardy, he's a daredevil. He'd be like, yeah, sure. Why don't we have a title match right now, right? Cried pops. Everybody's having a great time. So they have a match next week on SmackDown. Not tonight. You know, give them a little bit of, of, of time to prepare. But we'll have a match next week on SmackDown. It's going to be the main event. So here we go. Now we're on that episode of SmackDown. And once again, before a championship match, the champion is fine backstage looking like he's just got the shit kicked out of him. Ooh. As if he's been ambushed. But of course, Jeff Hardy's a fighter. He makes his way out to the ring, and he does the best he can. The crowd's behind him all the way. But you know what? Brian Kendrick is able to take advantage of Hardy's weakened state. Plus, earlier, before Jeff Hardy comes out on, you know, he, he, he's like fighting off all the medical people and stuff. He's coming out to the ring. Brian Kendrick jumps him like before they get to the ring, right? Smart. Him and Ezekiel Jackson beat up Jeff Hardy before, you know, before the bell even rings. So because of this, you know, Hardy's been, he's had shit kicked out of him. Nothing he can do about it. So there you go. On some episode of SmackDown, Brian Kendrick wins the WWE Championship. Yay! From Jeff Hardy. Now, I, I think that's... Well, I'll explain more about it later, but I think it makes more sense for Jeff Hardy to lose to Brian Kendrick, right? Yeah. That makes sense. And you can tell a story that way, you know, being beaten up beforehand and the plucky kind of him trying to fight through the adversity. And then, Brian, mm-hmm. like, that's how Brian Kendrick wins. That's believable. Yeah, you know what I mean. You got you got to keep things believable, which is funny in the world of the WWE, where fucking nothing is believable. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Alexa Bliss. We got to make these zombies believable. <laughs> we did. <laughs> you did. I did. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't contribute to the zombie storyline at all. You didn't so, even know what was happening. Yeah. No, I didn't. I wish I had, because I had some notes. <laughs> 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 I had a couple of notes for you. <laughs> but uh, we'll talk about that in the zombie podcast that's coming out in a couple of years' time. Making zombie. Yeah. Mm. It's really easy to make a zombie, mm. by the way. Mm. Anyway. Oh, yeah. So no, because that happened in between Unforgiven, uh, the title match, not the zombies. <laughs> because the title <laughs> match happened just after Unforgiven and before Survivor Series. So we're a couple of uh, weeks away. There's actually a, a Cyber Sunday in between, I believe. Ooh. Remember Cyber Sunday? I love Cyber Sunday. Taboo Tuesday. Yeah. So where they got all the, all the people to vote and all that shit. So that's what we're going to... We're going we're gonna to mention that in a second. So Brian Kendrick, of course, he's feeling pretty good about himself. Now he's the champion. He's got his his best friend. I say best friend. They're probably just bodyguards, associates. <laughs> you know, Ezekiel Jackson's watching his back. And you see this? Brian Kendrick was a man with a plan all along. And it turns mm-hmm. out that his plan has come into fruition. What a damn shame that both Triple H and Jeff Hardy were both injured right before their big championship matches. What hmm. what a surprise who could have done that. It definitely wasn't Brian Kendrick. He had nothing what, to do with it. Yeah, what, what kind of extreme superstar who's also a bodyguard for Brian Kendrick would do that? What kind of guy named Ezekiel Jackson would punch Triple H in the face like that? Who, who, who could it be? Who? Who? Who could it be? Now you think it's about a this. It's a mystery. You it said is at the start a of the episode is a mystery. This is a mystery. You see? It all ties together. God dang. Basically, we're talking about how Brian Kendrick is alluding to, but not officially saying, 
that he knew that he could beat Jeff Hardy because he already beat him at SummerSlam, but he wasn't sure about Triple H. So maybe some things got put into motion where Brian Kendrick was able to beat Jeff Hardy, who beat Triple H. It's a chain. It all makes sense. You know, you all hmm. just got to put the pieces together. So Kendrick's feeling pretty good about himself now that he's got the championship and his bodyguard, but he's forced to defend his championship at Cyber Sunday. And he gets to, you know, the fans get to vote in Cyber Sunday. You get to vote. The par is in your hands. So <laughs> get this. Get this. Are you ready for this, sir? Uh, yes. This is what happened in real life. So we're going to do this, but we're going to change oh. one name, right? And you're going to okay. know what name we changed. But in real life, the match was Triple H as a champion, and he was defending. And now, in Cyber Sunday, some people get to vote on the rules of the stipulations or the people involved in yes. the match. So we could vote on who we wanted to be in the match to fight Triple H. What is A, Jeff Hardy, who has fought J uh, Triple H before recently, so that would make sense. B, Vladimir Kozlov, <laughs> who apparently has fuck all to do with Triple H at the moment. Or, <laughs> or C, there's a third option, Jeff Hardy and Vladimir Kozlov. Oh, really? <laughs> that was the third option. Oh, man. <laughs> What oh a waste. my god! Like, I wonder what people voted for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vladimir voted, Kozlov, surely. Guess, uh, well, I, I find out the percentage the, of the vote that Vladimir Kozlov got. Oh man, how much? We want a little guess. Uh, like five percent. You're bang on the money. Really? <laughs> it was five percent. Really? Five percent of the vote <laughs> was to Vladimir Kozlov. What a guess. <laughs> <laughs> Why would why? <laughs> why would they put? You know he's gonna really get over with this. I'm I'm Vladimir Kozlov. They're gonna love I'm him. I'm sure they were building him as like a big cue at that point. I'm fairly sure he. Re I remember him wrestling Triple H at one point. Yeah, but I don't know if it was around this time or not. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But because it yeah, wasn't a, it wasn't a SummerSlam. That was Kali. Mm. Wasn't it not forgiven? Wasn't a Survivor Series. Well, we're getting the Survivor Series. Oh. Uh huh, and it was not a Survivor Series, so oh. it, it must have been some other time. Must have been, yeah. Anyway, basically, what we're gonna do is because they put Vladimir Kozlov in this for no reason. Uh, you and me are probably never gonna use Va Vladimir Kozlov again. Speak for yourself. Well, I certainly will. I have Brian Kendrick defending his belt against either Jeff Hardy, Vladimir Kozlov, or both in a triple threat. Okay. And of course, obviously, everybody votes. Kozlov. Ah. No, I vote uh, for Jeff Hardy. <laughs> but of course, like, again, that's part of the storyline. Now, I, uh, Kendrick and, and Jeff Hardy are telling a long storyline. And of course, because the fans didn't vote for what the rules are, they just left it a straight one on one match. That means Brian Kendrick can cheat and get himself disqualified. Sweet. So he's still a champion. There you go. Nice. So now we're at Survivor Series at November, and this has been going on since around about July or August. So all right, see, this is how you do shit. So Jeff Hardy wants his belt back, and Kendrick tells him to work for it. So if Hardy uh, can gather up a team and have a Survivor Series match against Brian Kendrick and his team, then if Jeff Hardy's team wins, Jeff Hardy can have a title shot. I didn't bother coming up with like the whole list of teams because... <laughs> You know, if, if fucking Vladimir Kozlov is on the show, they're probably really digging, you know, for, for good talent around here. So I didn't even bother. Okay, so they've all got their teams. One of the members of Jeff Hardy's team is Edge. Remember Edge? I do remember Edge, yeah. Cool. But of course, Edge being the ultimate opportunist, he wants the title shot instead of Jeff Hardy. And so he ends up just screwing over Jeff Hardy. And his team just simply because he doesn't want to see Jeff Hardy challenge for the, the championship. Nice. Which gives Brian Kendrick and his team the win at Survivor Series. Hurrah. Look at that. He's winning at Survivor Series. Pretty big. You know what I mean? But again, like, you know, he's he's like he's 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 got a win over Jeff Hardy at, at SummerSlam. He didn't win the scramble match. He beat Jeff Hardy in a championship match, kind of. You know, he defended his championship. At Cyber Sunday, and he's won at Survivor Series. He's he's getting good wins, but they're also like not unbelievable. You mm. know what I mean? Like they're not out of the realms of possibility. He's still yeah. getting through, and it all kind of makes sense, you know. So, Brand Kendrick's team win. 
And because of this, Brian Kendrick's feeling pretty good about himself. Edge wants that title shot. Jeff Hardy still wants that title shot too. Now we've got ourselves a bit of triple threat action that's going to lead us to Armageddon in December. We're going to have Edge versus Jeff Hardy versus the Brian Kendrick. Now, you want to tell me that you don't want to watch that match? Yeah, definitely. I want to see that match. Holy shit, dude. I want to see that match. Would you rather see that match or would you rather see Triple H versus Great Kelly? Oh, man. <laughs> don't make me choose. Would you rather see that match or Triple H versus Vladimir Kozlov? Just shoot me. Right. I'm, I'm not going to, but you, you get my drift. It's like, mm. why did you drop Brian Kendrick and you kept the other ones? Right? What the fuck yeah. is the matter with you? So, basically, what we've got here, we've had a couple of months of Brian Kendrick looking pretty hot. Right. Mm. And from here, basically, you can do whatever you want because this is this is in December. Armageddon's in December. So you'll 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 know that the WWE tend to have their main event shit properly in place from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania, you know, road to WrestleMania, as they say. Yep. And then from like backlash to the la latter half of the year, it's kind of like anything goes like they'll they'll test stuff out. They'll see what works and what doesn't work, you know. Yeah. Um, they'll give somebody a title, like Jinder Mahal's title run was like over the summer one year. Because as you know, you've probably seen the ratings for like WWE recently. They have not been very good, but also no. like across the board, like all the wrestling um, ratings haven't been very good because over the summer, people just, they have other shit to do, right? Mm. Statistically, the summer is not a great, so, I mean, SummerSlam obviously is going to do well, but like, you know, a lot of the, the, the viewership goes down a little bit because... People aren't super invested. They've other shit to do over the summer. So yeah. you, you always see them kind of experimenting a little bit more with who their champions are. Um, so at this point, it's December. We're about to hit the road to WrestleMania. So if you were in creative, you could look at what Brian Kendrick's done already and say, all right, maybe we'll keep the belt on him till the Royal Rumble. You know, he might not be the main event at WrestleMania, but he's he's proven himself. He's done a really good job, right? Yeah, he's having a good reign. Yeah. Exactly. So you might want to continue that. On the flip side, you can easily say either Edge or Jeff Hardy would have a shot at that. Edge, of course, a bona fide main event or even in 2008 could easily yeah. win the belt and then go straight, you know, hold on to it till WrestleMania and fight somebody like John Cena if you wanted to. But again, you could have Jeff Hardy win the belt at this Armageddon match and go off and do other stuff as well. There's options here. You know what I mean? This isn't it's not necessarily the end of the road. You can have Triple H come back. And, and do all this stuff. The point is that you've, you've stretched out a couple of months of, of time where you're getting other people over. Jeff Hardy, for example, you're getting him into the main event scene. But you're using Brian Kendrick to do that and also using that as a platform to get him over as well into the main event scene. You know what I mean? It's like his first title reign that we've given him here hasn't really been too star-studded, but it doesn't have yeah. to be because it's only meant to get his foot through the door. Do you remember CM Punk's first title reign in the WWE? Vaguely. Right. Not, it was terrible. He won the yeah. money in the bank. And money in the bank, won, yeah. Won yeah. the belt and then barely defended it. And then I think that's one of these scramble matches. He was supposed to defend uh, his championship against, you know, in the scramble match. And then they did the injury angle. They took him he out gets before replaced. the match. Yeah, I, remember I think that. he gets replaced by Edge. So you like, you know, CM Punk's first title reign, not so good. However, <laughs> <laughs> after that, he did pretty well for himself, right? Mm. Shit like that. You can do this as a way to... And you and me, we've talked about this before. Now, if you guys are hardcore listeners to the show, you'll know that we always say, you can't just put a belt on somebody, make them... You know, that doesn't get you over, right? Yeah. That's not the way to do that. And you'll notice that that seems like what I've done in this show. But of course, I've explained it. You know what I mean? I've, 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 we're not just like putting a, a belt... We didn't have Brian Kendrick beat Triple H and then go all the way to WrestleMania and then beat Hulk Hogan and John Cena. Well, see, that's you know. it. I don't think you have to put the belt on him because you've given reason to have the belt on him. You've had the feud with Jeff Hardy and then he's beating Jeff Hardy for, for the belt after that, that beatdown. We've still not found out what's going on there. Exactly. Um, so, you like, know, there's a lot to lot, a lot to kind of pack with that, yeah. He, he, he didn't just come in one day and just suddenly win a 20-minute match, right? Yeah. But he took advantage of a situation that, you know, he could easily take advantage of to win a championship. That makes sense for a guy like Brian Kendrick and for him to be a run away at Cyber Sunday and not defend his belt at Survivor Series. Heel tactics, right? That work mm. perfectly for this guy. So it's not like we're pushing him like a super, super mega guy. But at the same time, you're not treating him like a chump either. You know, you're still like, this is this guy. He, he knows what he's doing with the belt, right? So that's basically what we're saying is whenever it comes to booking, it's always a case-by-case -case basis. 
It's always mm. like it depends on the guy and how you use that guy, right? Like Triple H could be the guy that you can steamroll over other people if you wanted to. Brian Kendrick isn't that guy. You have to play it differently. Mm. And I think I did that with this one. So that's that's pretty much the uh, the show uh, or my rebooking of the, the anyway is is nice. that I would leave it at uh, Armageddon, that triple threat, and then you know do you you do whatever you think is best. That's what I would say. But that's that's my story for Brian Kendrick. All right, so feedback. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, you couldn't do much wrong here. I love Brian Kendrick, so you know, it's uh, I was always going to be happy. But I want to go back to the scramble match, and like you kept that vaguely the same. And you know, mm. I, I think that's good because that, that one thing, one point I was going to make at the start, of the start of the booking, and then I realized, and just in case you didn't do it, I didn't want to ruin your story. But like Brian Kendrick got a really good showing in that match, and it's like you said, he, he was like the longest reigning champion in that match, you know, and he got the kind of spotlight on him, and no one expected him to, you know, even have a pinfall in that match. So, like keeping that the same makes sense because it shows that he's a legitimate contender and that he can actually hold, he can handle himself basically, um, and that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, um, I, I really, really dug the story. The storyline with Jeff Hardy makes sense. You know, it's a match we'd want to see, and you know, Jeff, like you say, Jeff Hardy is that kind of baby face, kind of a uh, kind of upper upper mid card to main event kind of baby face who could help build Brian Kendrick up, and then you know, when Brian Kendrick beats him, it's a very legitimate victory. So you know, that that that's really good. Um, needs more cause love. Um, I think oh, yeah, should, yeah, I think, yeah. I think the listeners and I, I, I agree um, needs more cause love, but you know you're not perfect, so you know I, I don't <laughs> want to put that against you. Um, but yeah, just overall though, man, I, I like giving Kendrick that rain. Um, yeah. You know, just uh, making him that not not quite sh- chicken shit um, kind of um, champion, but you know he's got some backup and he's going to use it kind of thing. Have Ezekiel Jackson help win all these matches using his muscle kind of thing, but he can still handle himself in the ring kind of stuff. So you know that I just really dug that story, man, and uh, yeah, that's a, a great way to book the Brian Kendrick. The Brian Kendrick. The Brian Kendrick. The Brian Kendrick. Yeah. All right, Jr. It's pronounced the Brian Kendrick. Okay. The fucking Jr. I hate that Fuck guy. Jr. Fucking. We don't hate Jr. We don't hate Jr. Seriously, I hate that guy. Fucking guy. Not not. We're talking about Jr. from Dallas again. The one that got yeah. shot. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. 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 We that shot guy. him. Yeah. yeah. I I do I do it again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, speaking of shooting people, do you want to play Ebola? <laughs> <laughs> How does that make sense? Because during the fucking minute when you find out what you what you have to say, you want to shoot yourself. Well, whenever you hear what I have to tell you, oh, man. Uh, let's play cafe tambola. The cafe tambola. <laughs> All right, we're gonna play a little bit of game of the cafe tambola in just a moment. We want to say. First of all, thank you very much for listening to the show. We really appreciate it. You know, we uh, we love doing this stuff, especially this one about Brian Kendrick. It was a lot of fun. And we're going to have plenty more rebookings coming up. If you want to hear some more of our exclusive rebookings, we have a lot over on Patreon.com. It's uh, patreon.com forward slash making kayfabe. I think you're going to love it over there. We've got exclusive rebookings. We've also got some other new shows that nobody else has heard unless you go straight to Patreon, such as some... Um, what was, what was a K-Fabe conundrum? K-Fabe conundrum, the, yeah. speaking the smell in a cell match. There's, listen man, if you think that the K-Fabe Tombola is fun, the K-Fabe conundrum has broken us many a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game where we get a longer period of time to think about things, which is it's good like and a, bad. It's, it's basically like a longer version of K-Fabe Tombola. Like, they want to like, yeah. set each other okay, challenges to book something ridiculous. And it's like a full-length episode, full-length booking, but it's just like fucking ridiculous. It's crazy, and it's all up on Patreon. If you want to check it out, patreon.com forward slash making kayfabe. Uh, we've got two, a five-pound and a ten-pound tier. Hey, man, if you want to just check it out, it really helps us a lot. And uh, we really appreciate that. You know, if, if you don't mind, tell your friends. That really helps us out. Check us out and making kayfabe on Twitter and Instagram as well. That's where you can keep up to date with all the cool kayfabe happenings. So there you go. We really appreciate you guys. You're the best. And to reward you guys, you sexy, awesome people, we're going to play a little game of kayfabe Nebola. Hooray. Everybody's favorite show. So if you're not familiar with kayfabe Nebola, let me give you a brief rundown. It's very simple. There are going to be four wrestlers and there's going to be four different scenarios. They're going to be hidden 
behind the letters one to four the letters <laughs> oh my god every, every time every time there, there's some people who think you play a character i'm not i'm not you know, doing he's, this. he's actually like this yeah <laughs> i yeah well i was doing what you already saw because that was a really good all the way up to that super good you were doing I was so on well fire. oh I was man you were fire. So and well. i just couldn't remember the difference between <laughs> numbers and letters they're gonna be hidden but behind Number one to four and the letters A to D. There you go. <laughs> uh, Bryce is going to pick one at random. And then after that, he is going to have six seconds to tell all of you all about the wrestler and the scenario that he has picked. It couldn't be simpler, you know, unless you're an idiot like me who doesn't know what a number is and letters is. <laughs> but there we go. So, Bryce, are you ready to show how much smarter you are than me? <laughs> <laughs> by by proving to the world that you know what numbers are. Well, I'm gonna give it a good go. Uh, That's so. Today's tombola has been sent in by Daniel Barnsley, a Dan J Barnsley, a Twitter. Thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate your support. We're psyched that you sent in a tombola. If you want to send in your own tombolas, feel free. Add, if you go to our <laughs> Twitter page, Making Kayfabe, you can send us a little DM there. Or makingkfabe at gmail.com. You can email us your tumble suggestions there as well. We really appreciate it. You can be just as cool as Dan J. Barnsley here. By sending oh, yeah. in a tumbola for one of us to agonize over. And today, <laughs> today, Bryce, you are the one that gets to have a little bit of, of agony. Well, it might, be, it might be a breeze. You don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. Um... So, Bryce, if you would like to give us a letter number combination, you can determine what a letter and a number is. That's up to you. Give me. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna take influence from your one last week. To be, or oh, not the old be. The Shakespeare. Uh, the, the old Shakespeare. The old Shakespeare. Uh, I, I, always using the Shakespeare tactic for KF Tambola. Oh my god. You. What? I love this. Oh no. I don't. I don't like that you love it. <laughs> no, it's really good. <laughs> no, I bet it's not. <laughs> it is. I swear. All right. Okay. Right. Remember, you just said it wasn't good. Five right, minutes okay. from now, you, you're going to look back and go, all right, that was pretty good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, do you want to know who you didn't get? Yes, tell me. You did not get draws. Okay. Probably for the best. It's been true enough. Yeah, I don't like, I'm like, <laughs> this is, I don't mind making fun of the other guys, but leave, come on, leave draws Come on, alone. Like, leave draws yeah. alone, yeah. <laughs> come on, man, he's had a, he's had a rough time. Uh, you didn't get, you didn't get draws. You didn't get headbanger mosh. Ah, oh, my dude! An actual my favorite boy. on the on the show. That's the one of our one of our boys. We don't talk about him that much, but he he's one of our we boys. We don't mention Headbanger Mosh much, no. But he's he's one of our boys. Yeah. The he the Headbangers tend to turn up in the tombolas. Have you noticed that? Yeah. That they'll, they they'll do, turn yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember um, the hammer hammer bangers? <laughs> 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 oh boy. We have had some good time. If you hey, go back and listen to the other shows if you haven't heard them already, because there's some crazy tape, uh, KVF is in there. Hell yeah! You didn't get draws. You didn't get headbanger mosh. You didn't get Sparky Plug. Oh, but probably had to think for a second there. You didn't get him. <laughs> you didn't get Sparky Plug. But I'll tell you, he did get actual friend of the show. I assume the Blue Meanie. <laughs> you got okay. the Blue Meanie. I love the blue mini, like unironically. We've, we've never had a blue mini tombola before. We no, go. but he, he's he's awesome. So you're gonna have the blue mini, but what's he gonna do? I'll tell you what he's. Well, I'll tell you what he's not gonna do. I'll tell you that he's not. What you didn't get was he becomes a t they become a time traveler, so they can be booked in any period of wrestling. Okay. You didn't get the blue mini traveling through time. That would have been great. You didn't oh, get man, that. Man, I really wanted to book blue mini versus Frank Gotch. <laughs> Match with ages. I I'd watch it. <laughs> you didn't get the uh, the blue mini starts his own fed, which is really okay. interesting because the blue mini used to have his own federation. Did he? Yes. Which one? Was, uh, I believe it was called Three P Wrestling. All right. Uh, I don't remember what the P is like. Pro P N something wrestling. Oh, so, I was starting to ring bells actually. Yeah. Yeah. This was like right after ECW folded, I think, but two thousand one, mm. two thousand two. Hmm. Uh, so he actually had his own federation for a while. Hot damn. And that's good you didn't get that because then you can't. That, that would have been easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, Blue Meanie does that thing Dylan said. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit, sit quietly for the next 50 seconds. Now, you didn't get this one, which I wish you'd gotten because this would have been great. 
you didn't get the blue mini is me allowed to be a millionaire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's what you did get. I'm interested in this, right? I'm okay. really interested to see because you know I think you know this topic. Oh god. You're gonna No, it's not a no god. I'm telling you, it's a good one. Okay. I would never lie to you, Bryce. Okay. <sighs> Okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to say that you are going to have 60 seconds to tell me and all of the lovely K papers out there all about the Blue Meanie ending up in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh my God. That's it. it that just that the Blue Meanie <laughs> ends up in New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, you, you've seen New Japan, right? I love New Japan, but I can never imagine Blue Mini being there. <laughs> well, now you can think about it. Now the next time you watch it, you'll be like, who would be the best person for the Blue Mini to fight? Hmm. Oh my god. So there you go. Easy. Blue right? Mini. Is it, what's it, it's, it's just ends up in New Japan. That, that's it basically. Ends up in New Japan. You can interpret that whatever way you wish. Ends up in New Japan. Oh it's boy! Up, it's up to you. I don't know how you wanna you wanna call it, how you wanna go with it. I trust you. I will trust that you will do the blue meanie justice. Oh well, don't you worry. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll roll with that. Let's do it. Okay. So you're gonna have 30 seconds. No, you're not. You're 30 seconds. God damn it! What does it matter to me? You're gonna have 60 seconds to tell me and everybody else all about the blue meanie ending up in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Are you ready? Yeah, I might, I might start with for those 30 seconds anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> just, just we'll see. Just, just do it for 30 seconds and do it twice. Mm. Do it again. All right. Well, I'm going to count you down from three, and then you're going to go. All right? We're going to go. All right. Three, All right. Three, two, one. Let's go. All right. So Blue Mini ends up in New Japan. So he actually, he's going to, he signed a contract, and he's going to debut in the G1, which is like a yearly tournament kind of thing. Um, his first match is against fucking Tanahashi or something but Blue, Blue Meanie loses a match and it's like a really hard to match so he's like fuck that I don't, I don't want to take part anymore so he quits um, but it, it, he's then reminded that it's a tournament and it has like at least eight more matches left and he's that he kind of contractually has to do so uh, oh, also your next match is against fucking Ishii um, so you know you're going to get your ass kicked again so but Blue Meanie's like fuck like, what, what do I do and he, and he realises what what was the last thing he done when he was out, is he, out of his depth in WWF and that's right he dressed up as Gold dust, but blue. He's blue dust. So he decides that he's going to be known as Blue Okada uh, from here <laughs> on, the Blue Maker. Um, and, blue he, and he maker. tries to, the Blue Maker, and, and he tries the gimmick, and he loses to Ishii anyway, and then <laughs> eventually loses to the real Okada, uh, who, who who kicks kind of seven chases shit out of him. And um, yeah, alas, Mini does not make it to the next round of the G1 and gets fired. So that's it. There we go. There you go. Yeah. You nailed it perfectly. There we go. That's what happened. You believe me? He was in Japan. <laughs> And that sounds like we would love to watch that. Yes, I'd, I'd watch that. Yeah, I'd, I'd watch New Japan. Anything that happened, to be honest. Dude, so. I, I do. I would watch it a lot more if the Blue Mini turned up. That's a fact. Yeah, my Blue Blue Mini versus Ishii. Like fucking hell. What was the the Blue the Blue Okada? Blue, oh yeah, is that what it was? Blue Maker. The, the yeah. Blue Maker. That's what it was. Yeah. I'm like, that's good. I like that. That's really it's good. The Rainmaker. Or yeah, Blue Maker. The Blue Maker. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it sucked. <laughs> no, it didn't suck. It had the Blue Meanie in it. Are you kidding me? I love the Blue Meanie. Blue Meanie, if you're listening to this show, thanks. You want to come on the show? He's probably listening. He's probably. probably is. Yeah. Uh, he's a good dude. Dude. Steve Richards. Blue, Blue, yeah, Blue Meanie gets Steve Richards on. Also, really cool to hear about your run in New Japan. I don't even know about that. <laughs> Congratulations. I had no idea, but that sounded like it sounded like you, you had a great time. You were in the tournament? Yeah, G1. You know. Yeah, blue maker. Yeah, you blue, blue, and everybody. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. You would die. Does he do the blue mist? Um. Yeah. Of course. There we go. See, now we're thinking. Yeah. Blue now thunder bomb. Yeah. Blue. Ah. There we go. Blue. <laughs> blue uh, uh. That's it. <laughs> I don't know Blue's what else. Clues. Is. <laughs> Please clues. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we had some fun. That was a good one. Thank you very much to Daniel Barnsley again for sending that in. Like we said, if you want to send your own KVAP to Bullets in, feel free at makingkvap at gmail.com or DM us at Twitter at makingkvap. We really appreciate it, guys. So that was a lot of fun, wasn't it, Bryce? That was a lot of fun. I had a good time. It was a lot of fun. We learned a lot about Brian Kendrick. We learned a lot about the Blue Meanie. We learned a lot about Vladimir Kozlov. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time all around I think we want to thank everybody for listening you guys are the best 
We really appreciate it. That your support really helps us. It, this last couple of weeks, we've been blown away by how many downloads we've been getting on the show. Yeah. It's unbelievable, and we can't believe it. Which is the definition of unbelievable, I suppose. Yeah, we could, couldn't believe it. Yeah, you couldn't couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Could not believe it, and <laughs> blew our minds. So we're super psyched about that, man. And we just want to say that we are super grateful for all of that stuff. And like we said, if you want to follow us on Twitter, making kayfabe. Same with Instagram. We're on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash making kayfabe. A little donation that way really helps us out. Or if you could just share the link around, that, all that stuff really helps us out too. But basically, we're just super excited. You guys love the show. We love doing the show. So we're going to be doing plenty more where that came from. Speaking of plenty more where that came from, there's going to be an episode and next week. It's going to be fresh out of the creative mind of our very own Bryce Kitcher. So I have a question. For, mm. for Bryce, is there anything you could say that might stimulate the, the listeners as to what next week episode might be about? We're going to be going back to 1998, and we're going to be talking... Um, well, it's, it's, going to, it's going to feature... Part of the storyline is going to feature the Brawl for All tournament. Uh, ooh. Mm. And when the Blue Meanie entered... <laughs> exactly, when the Blue Meanie won the Brawl for All. Just beat the shit out of Bart Gun. Fuck Bart Gun. I won't. I'm not going to do it. No matter Don't how many times he no. asks, I won't do it. <laughs> not again. No, the first time is bad enough, let me tell you. Exactly. He is nasty. Anyway, nasty. maybe cut that bit out. <laughs> anyway, so some 1998 stuff, maybe from the Brawl for All. That's interesting. Mm. Mm. But who? Who could it be? Does not anyone... <laughs> it, might... it might be Bargun. It's not. It's not Bargun. But who else might it be? There's only one way to find out, and that is to make sure to stay up to date with us on all your podcasting apps and to check out our episode next week. It's going to be amazing. Trust us. So make sure you follow us on every available platform you can find it because you're not wanna, you're not going to want to miss next week's episode. Boy, Hardy. Is there anything else you want to say to the people, Bryce, before you wrap things up? Thanks. Excellent. There you go. That's Bryce, a man of many words. And... <laughs> I'm also here. We want to say thank you very much, guys, for listening. We're going to be back next week with a bombastic episode. We're going to see you guys later. So take care.